Hey guys, just a reminder, this is not official medical advice or such. Please seek an appointment with a licensed medical provider. Hi, this is Dr. Tom Rogers coming to you with a weekly episode of the Common Sense MD. Again, I'm very much honored to have Dr. Randy Pardue with me here again today. Um, there's so much we could talk about because we're very like-minded. We've both been family doctors for decades, and we both believe in functional integrated medicine, which means finding the root cause of the problem. I mean, he espouses lifestyle medicine, has his own gym where he trains people. And the reason I really wanted to do this podcast with you, Randy, today is because you have a special interest in brain health. Mm -hmm. And we've both kind of gone through some training, you probably more than me, with Bredesen's protocol and some of the, you know, we've both been all over the place studying this and, and watching it. And I've watched my own mother die of Alzheimer's disease and my grandmother as well. But so we both are really interested uh, because we're baby boomers. We're seeing people mm -hmm. our age with dementia. Yeah. I went to my 50-year high school reunion last year, and there were several with Alzheimer's dementia in wow. nursing homes, which is scary. But um, so let's talk yeah. about brain health a little bit. Why? What got you so interested in doing the things that you're doing with brains, with Parkinson's patients, with dementia patients? Well, again, it really started with just an understanding of, of functional medicine and chronic disease and pulling these diseases out by the roots. And so, so we started really more with metabolic disease. And that's the first thing I learned about was, was reversing diabetes and, and um, you know, morbid obesity and, and everything that goes with that. And so along the line, so I obviously read a lot in that, that realm, and um, I uh, came across a book by a guy named Norman Doidge called The Brain That Changes Itself. And um, it's just fantastic. It's basically, he's a storyteller, and he goes through and tells the story of neuroplasticity and the finding out about that. So he... Um, he talks about um, uh, uh, the early scientists that began to realize that the brain is not fixed at age 25 and then can just decline. Like they that, used to think. Like, yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so our belief was, you know, all you could do was get worse, not get better. And so once they learn about neuroplasticity and then begin to find out some of the mechanisms, which really we were back to the same functional mechanisms that we talk about in every other realm of, of health of the body and so um so he, he so and he talked he's got one fascinating chapter about a guy that uh, was running in hawaii when he was 60 and and coded basically he died and they had to resuscitate him do heart surgery and then he by following these principles lived another 35 40 years and thrived you wow. know and so he just so just talking about this fact that we can grow new neurons in our brain that we're constantly rewiring our brain new new neurosynapses or connections we can grow new blood vessels in our brain up to very old age up to the 80s That's and so that yeah so that just got me fascinated and that it started from there that is so fascinating to me i need to get that book i don't have that book but um but you're right. I mean, there's a reason why they call Alzheimer's type 3 diabetes, because yes. it, it is a metabolic disease. Yes. Um, and there's a lot yeah. of factors. When you look into Bredesen's books, The End of Alzheimer's, which is a book that I recommend all my patients that have a family member dealing with dementia read, because there's a lot of things you can do to treat it and, more importantly, prevent it. But in a lot of, most of them really are lifestyle changes, especially what you eat. But he gives like, he says there's, there's no one uh, cause of dementia. There's 36 causes yeah. of it. Yeah. And, I was, and I know his theory on tau, that protein, and then uh, amyloid beta, which is another um, thing that people look at when you see look at the brains of a dementia patient usually through autopsy but you know all the the drug companies are focusing on getting rid of this in your brain and none of it's working i don't think i've seen one medicine out there that works for dementia yet unless mm -hmm. you know maybe you know you talk about your aricept your namenda now some of the new ones um that are infusions but 
none of them, in my opinion, really work very well at all. And they can actually be dangerous and make it worse. But there, Bredesen will say in another article I read this morning, says that tau and amyloid beta are actually a result of your brain trying to fight it off. So it's not really the cause of it. It's it's your brain t- trying to repair itself. Yeah, it's part of the immune process, the immune reaction, and, and a protective of further damage is, is the, the thinking. And, and certainly what we've seen with the, with the amyloid removal drugs to this point um, it is is not not uh, success <laughs> you yeah. know uh, there's a newer one that was recently approved and i'm not sure what's happening with it at the moment but, but i know that one one dr- one of those amyloid removal drugs was ex- extremely controversial even with the panel that that they finally ended, approved it even yeah. though some almost so, half of them said no way yeah, they, they, they resigned it. yeah so yeah so i i, I don't think and I, I i think we don't don't believe that there's a forthcoming drug that's going to be the answer so to speak because the answer lies in as you said i mean i think it's over 50 different things now you know Hmm. um, 50 different things that are happening to our bodies or that we're doing to our bodies that are leading to decline of the brain i have patients all the time that are around my age or younger that tell me that they're really having some significant memory problems Mm -hmm. and they do okay on the the MMI or the Canadian or Hamilton, but um, they're really worried about it. Um, mm-hmm. What advice would you give to a patient like this who is concerned? Maybe they have some family history. Maybe, you know, we, of course, we do genetic testing with the APOE gene. It's on every Cleveland panel. But what advice would you give to middle-aged baby boomer type people on how to address this, especially if they're seeing maybe a few signs. Some of that could be normal, yeah. but when do you get worried, and what would you tell them? Well, I, I, you know, first of all, I don't. I want to minimize the amount of worry, and I, I do tell them that there is, there actually is some normal memory loss of aging. Now, I think we might overemphasize <laughs> that and and miss some early people going into. Alzheimer's, but but I think if they if they're getting real worried about it, they're um, they're going to accelerate their their process. Yeah. yeah. So um, so but what I but I tell them is re- we really need to just think about all the things that we know are healthy for the body, and that that's going to help ward off something if it is coming. You know. And so we, again, again, sugar is a big factor with all of this. And you, talk, you mentioned type 3 diabetes. So we know that brain cell insulin resistance is a huge factor. That insulin, interestingly, insulin is what you call a trophic factor. So insulin makes brain cells, keeps brain cells healthy, if you will, when it, there's a healthy insulin response in the brain cell. Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, so we we get people to do a lot of the things we do with metabolic health, a lot of the, the healthy foods, a lot of the exercise and such. We're real big on, um, you've heard of exercise creates something called BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor. Yep. And so we really encourage that so that they can just be, we call it mir- miracle growth for the brain. You've probably heard that, mm-hmm, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And um, so encourage the exercise and the other things that will create BDNF. I would say exercise would be my number one recommendation, uh, like you, for and cutting out sugar. I mean, yep. sugar is just a devil. Mm-hmm. Believe me, I've seen it with my two diabetic kids, but it's so inflammatory, mm-hmm. and that's what you're getting really with Alzheimer's or dementia is a brain on fire, mm-hmm. and it's, it's a horrible thing to watch. Every one of us has been or is going to be affected by by somebody in our family. I mean, yes. there's just no getting around this. I'm sure if you've lived long enough, you know somebody probably in your family that has or has had dementia. But like you say, it's it's multifactorial, so you almost have to look at a lot of it. I, I encourage people to not only exercise and eat right and stay lean and look at your hormones, <laughs> but um, – I also tell them that if they can't hear to get their hearing tested. Oh, yeah. Yes. If they can't see to get their vision tested because these sensory yes. inputs that we have are so important. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and there's good data that uh, 
that early hearing loss is definitely going to contribute to to loss of cognitive function. I think there's even some medications that can contribute to uh, loss of mental, especially we were talking a minute ago about some of the sleep medicines like Ambien and mm -hmm. some of those medicines are just horrible for you. Mm -hmm. um, Definitely a, a proton pump inhibitors. I, you look at all the thing, you know, things they cause malabsorption of, vitamin B12, Horrible. which is absolutely critical for brain development. Yeah, know. exactly Magnesium, right. Magnesium, you know. Um, so, yeah, the, the PPIs, I really work hard to get all my patients off those. Me too. I mean, they're, they're indicated for like two weeks, and, and yet they do work for reflux, but people leave them, leave them on it for years. Yeah. Speaking of that, really the gut microbiome is so mm -hmm. essential. Really... 80% of your immune system is located in your gut, that, those bacteria in your gut, which by far outweigh the amount of DNA you have in your own body, <laughs> tell your brain what to do. Yeah, amazingly. Yeah, they're, and we're, the, what I love in that science is that they're, we, we're figuring out what the actual signals are now. You know, the, yeah. the uh, short-chain fatty acids that they create and actually use as a signal um, the, the idea that, uh, that certain bacteria that thrive on sugar can actually give a signal to our brain to make us crave sugar mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> is just so amazing. Yeah, it's, it's really scary. That's why when you eat sugar, you want more of it. It's, it's really more habit-forming than about anything else you could possibly do to yourself. Yeah, um, yeah. Like, well, they say like cocaine, you know. Yeah, even worse than cocaine as far <laughs> as addictability. Um, but... Anyway, this has been so great. I really want to get you back in and continue this dialogue about brain health, functional medicine, and new things that we can think about and do for our patients. I'm really so much in gratitude to you that you're practicing the type of medicine you are. I mean, I yes. think it's phenomenal. It's outside the box. It's <laughs> gutsy, and you're doing the right thing. Well, thank well, you, Thank Tom. you, Randy. I, I feel and the same way about you. Keep, yeah. keep, keep it going. Uh -huh. uh, thank you. So thank you, guys. We'll see you next week. <laughs>